Vasa Bhagavato Arato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa that the teachers generally teach long breath and short breath? Uh, just knowing whether it's long or short. All oh, right. Just knowing that it's long or short whenever you breathe. Yes. Yes, for the step three, it will be knowing uh, whether the breath is long or short. So um, we are just following literally the this one is can, they can hear from here. So we will do the steps according to the 16 steps that the Buddha prescribed in the Anapanasati Sutta. So I think we will just do that and uh, how others do and knowing the step three, I think uh, the first two steps have a way of actually cooling down yourself. For the step one, the long breath relaxes the body. So then you are now in a relaxed state to meditate. Then the second step is to do the short step. It's just to enhance and uh, uh, make you more alert. But after having said that, the first step to the 16 steps are just flows. That means step one will go into step two, to step three, to step four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14, 15, 16. If you just be mindful of your breath, it will lead you to there. It is actually a flow. It will just lead from step one to step 16. But then we want to study what the Buddha taught in the 16 steps as literal. So we want to uh, do that. Okay, now for the second question. Okay, no questions. We shall then. Uh, So uh, now we shall start. I think last week we had a question uh, from the floor that talks about fear and hurt. So based on these two questions from the participants, I decided to bring out exactly what addresses their problems. So in the Majima Nikaya 119, no, the Anapanasati Sutta is 118. So now we go to 119. 119, Majima Nikaya 119 is talk about the uh, mindfulness of the body, which we are going to do mindfulness of the body by mindfulness of breathing in and out. Breathing is 
are part of the body. No? Breathing is part of the body. Without the breath, you will die. So it is part of the body. To know whether you are alive, people check your breath. So now here what we want to do is to reinforce that mindfulness of body or breathing has these 10 benefits. And these 10 benefits uh, are the following. So these 10 benefits of mindfulness of the body. So it conquer discontent. It conquer discontent and desire. It conquer discontent. If you are hurt or uh, you know, it will put you back to the middle path. And desire also, if you are in a state of greed or delight, then mindfulness of the body will ground you back to the middle. So this mindfulness of the body conquers your discontent and desire. It also conquers fear and dread. Fear and dread is the other two mental sufferings. So we all have a mind and we have a body. When we are disturbed by our mind, we can always ground ourselves on our body. And our body is breathing, like the breath, or our postures, or our activities, whatever we are doing. So we can always ground our discontent, our fears, our desires, our dread into the body. So breathing is one aspect of it. Then it also enables you to endure physical discomfort, internal in, as you when you are ill or when you are exposed to the external elements, the heat, the cold, the bites, etc. So it will enable you to endure physical discomfort, internal diseases, aches, etc. and external so you would not be disturbed by influxes. You are steadying yourself, grounding yourself on the body like a very steady oak tree, a very strong tree that will not be upheaved by winds or hurricanes, etc. So you'll be able to endure physical, and you'll be able to endure mental. So then you will be delivered from suffering by wisdom. So these four benefits uh, are actually sufficient to do mindfulness of body and mindfulness of breathing. So if you want to conquer mental and physical discomforts, you have to ground yourself on mindfulness of the body. The body is uh, tangible. The mind is sometimes intangible. So it is something tangible that we can do when we practice mindfulness of the body through breathing. So then the other spin-offs is that once you are very focused, you get the four jhanas. And of course, the spin-off are the psychic powers of the body can travel to the Brahma world. Or the psychic powers of the mind can encompass other minds to know what they are thinking. And you have psychic ears can hear. And psychic ears, psychic ears, and psychic eyes divine eye to be able to see your own past lives and others past lives and that is how karma and vipaka act. So these are all spin-offs but then the most important is that you can end your mental suffering 
and your physical suffering and be very steady when there are physical, verbal, mental influxes. So then you can be delivered by wisdom from suffering. So this is to inspire you, to encourage you on what the Buddha has said about mindfulness of the body. So we are in a sort of like isolation, you know, COVID isolation. So we must not be mentally affected. So we have to be strong and how to develop the strength and resilience in your mind is to have mindfulness in your body, of your body, through mindfulness of breathing too. Okay, you just sort of like absorb that for a while. And then we go to Samyutta Nikaya 48.42. You have uh, seen uh, the broadcast notes. Uh. So here, it is to encourage you to say that you have to do mindfulness. So there was this Brahmin, Unaba, who went to the Buddha and asked the Buddha, asked the Buddha, these five faculties, our eyes, our nose, our ears, our tongue, our body, they have different spheres of action. They don't intercept with each other. What do they resort to? So the Buddha says that all these faculties resort to the mind because the mind is the chief, the CEO. The CEO will direct the eye to look at what or not to look at what and so on and so forth. So the mind is chief, mind is the boss. Then the Brahmin asked, what does the mind resort to? And the mind would resort to mindfulness. That's the chief. You want to develop your mind, you must develop mindfulness. If you don't want to develop your mind, then you don't need to do mindfulness. You can be distracted or demented. But we want to concentrate, focus, so the mind can be developed. So the mind resort to mindfulness. And what does mindfulness resort to? When you do mindfulness, it will resort to liberation. And what does liberation resort to? Liberation resort to Nibbana, end of suffering. So it means that if you just stay mindful, it will lead to liberation. It will lead to Nibbana. It is a natural process. It's a process of nature if you train your mind. If you train your mind to do mindfulness, it will lead to liberation, it will lead to Nibbana, end of suffering, end of craving. So it just says that mindfulness is not hard, it's just to pay attention. So if you pay attention mindfulness of the body, he says if you are mindful of the body, it will lead to liberation. As you see here, deliverance by wisdom. So this particular sutta is just to say how our mind works, how our six sense bases work. Our five senses depend on the mind. The mind depends on mindfulness. And when you have mindfulness, you will be delivered. So it is you have to practice and see it for yourself. You hear it, you have to verify it. And it has been verified by the Buddha and all the Arya Sangha, all the Arya noble monks. 
So here we want to practice the way the Buddha taught. So this is the two suttas. Then we go to the crux of the sutta. The crux of the sutta, MN118. I'm encouraging you all to read the suttas because this is the teachings of the Buddha. Teachers like me will come and go, but the teachings of the Buddha are always there. You can always refer to the teachings, to the suttas, and then you'll be inspired to practice because the words of the Buddha are literal. You have to practice literally. So we shall practice literally what he taught. So, MN118, we now go to the mindfulness of the body, the first tetrate. So we talk about body, yeah? so it's very important, this aspect of it, the mindfulness of breathing, these first four steps are very important. But first, you must prepare yourself. So you read the sutta, you say that he says this, huh? that you have to put, you have to go to somewhere. So he told the monk, you go to an empty, quiet spot, to the root of the tree, to an empty space, and then you cross your legs, put your back straight. And then you put mindfulness in front of you. So this mindfulness in front of you, is said to be parimukha. Parimukha, this word is the face, or around the mouth. Just like now you are wearing mask. Eh? So when you put your mindfulness in front of you, you actually uplift yourself to hear the face. And as you put a mask, as you guard yourself from the COVID virus, and you guard yourself internally from speaking harshly, or lies, or gossip, or slandering, etc. As you guard yourself, here you put your mindfulness in front of you, you guard your five senses. And when you got your five senses, you will be used to putting mindfulness in front of you. As you go out to the world, you have to put this mindfulness in front of you to see the world. And don't get, no, that you have that space. You must put that space in front of you so that you would not be disturbed. It doesn't uh, dart into your space. You have just put them at the, as far away as you like. So this is putting your best face forward. So it's very important about this parimukha. Afterwards, we will practice it so that you can appreciate what the Buddha taught about mindfulness in front, okay? Then the four steps here. The four steps is that breathing in, breathing in long, you know you are breathing in long. Breathing out long, you know you are breathing out long. So we do the steps literally, okay? So, when you breathe in long, and you breathe out long, your whole body relaxes. It's physiological. If you are tensed up, your breath gets short. But when you are relaxed, so this is a way of cooling down. Just when you start a physical exercise, you need to warm up. But here, we need to cool down. So when we cool down, we have to breathe in long. 
to cool down. And then we breathe out long to relax ourselves. So you try this even before you see the doctor or whenever you have a very stressful meeting. You just go into this breathing in long and breathing out long. After some time, if you give yourself enough time, the breath, you'll notice that it becomes short. It's relative. Then you notice the short breaths. When you breathe in short, you know you breathe in short. So it's important you know whether it is short or long. So you know it's short, you know this is short in and short out. In another way, if you just do after a long step one, when you do step two as in volitionally, intentionally, breathe in short and breathe out short, you notice the effects. It makes you more vibrant. Okay? The first will relax you. The second step will make you alert. Then uh, when you are in an optimized state of relaxed and alert state, you then go to step three. And the step three is to experience the entire breathing in, experience the entire breath body. That means the entire breath body. And the entire breath body, in and out. You notice when you breathe in, at the, at the end of in, there's a pause. And then when you breathe out, at the end of the out, there is also a pause before the in starts again. So you also notice the entire breath, breathing in and breathing out. Then the fourth step here is that you learn how to, and this is actually getting increasingly calmer, but here he asks you, breathing in, calm the bodily formations. That means calm the breath. Breathing out, calm the breath. So we all have said before, bodily formations. Bodily formations as in MN44, Chula Vadala Sutta. Chula Vadala Sutta, the shorter discourse on questions and answers. It says that bodily formation is breathing in and breathing out. You know bodily formations means actions of the body. When you comb your hair, that's bodily formations. When you put your arm up like this, is bodily formations. But when you're sitting down, your bodily formation, the posture is sitting. And when you notice you're breathing in and breathing out, that is also bodily formations. And then you say, your mind then directs your body. Li consciousness said, calm. So your mind calm the breath. So when you learn how to calm yourself, when you calm the bodily formations, you will learn how to calm your body. So these are the important steps. As we go through the practice, we will guide you along. So this middle, middle part, I haven't emphasized enough uh, in front. So I said, put your mindfulness in front of you. So in front of you, uh, it is between your external and internal. So it is between, so it's middle, between internal and external. So that is middle, right? So the middle path, 
sometimes it's literal. So it's middle path. Middle path. So between your body, internal and external. In front will fulfill the middle between your internal and external. And then this middle path, another middle is here, breathing in and out. Breathing in and out uh, is breathing in, breathing out, just like you noticed your mass uh, in and out, in and out. You notice when you breathe in and out, your surgical mass go this way and that way. So it gets sucked in when you breathe in and then out when you breathe out. So this is the way you should watch your breathing in and out. So you are mindfulness in front of you, breathing in and out this way. Okay, you lift up your head eh, to see or watch or feel your breath this way. Sometimes when you close your eyes, you may just move, think your breath move this way and then you start moving your head this way and that. So you must be very quiet. Your body is quiet. You are breathing in and out. So this is middle, middle and even middle here. This is the human realm, the middle realm. So this is quite important, this step. Okay? So shall we proceed? So we start off. Uh, now everybody get yourself ready. So we shall do half an hour or more meditation. Right. So the directions in the sutta is this. Find a quiet spot. Sit down. Fold your legs. And then we shall find out what is mindfulness in front of you, mindfulness at the back of you, mindfulness to the side of you. So now we put our mindfulness at the back of us and then we straighten our spine. And then we notice, uh, when we notice the, whether we are straight or not, we put the mindfulness to the right, mindfulness to the left, and then mindfulness in front of us in front of us. So when mindfulness in front of us, you, your face will definitely lift up. Your face won't go down. In front of you, parimukha means in front of your face. So you put your mindfulness in front of you. You can sit on a chair And uh, if your sloth and torpor or sleepiness comes easily, then you should sit away from the back of the chair. Now we shall practice five minutes on mindfulness of in front of you. Okay, so we shall just fold legs. Straighten your back. Put your mindfulness in front of you. So when it's in front of you, your face will be upright. Then you notice you're breathing in and breathing out. Just like you notice the breath coming in and out beneath your mask.
remain in the mindfulness in front. Keep your mindfulness in front of you. Keep your mindfulness in front of you and you're mindfully breathing in and out. So uh, you are in a position where you are in the middle. So we are at the posture where your back is upright. Your mindfulness is in front of you. And you're breathing in and breathing out. From time to time, you should check your posture that is upright, that your face is also upright with the mindfulness in front of you. And you're breathing in and out. Forward, backwards, as in the breath. So when you put your mindfulness in front of you, you notice that your posture will come naturally to be very upright.
So I hope that this practice of mindfulness in front of you can be appreciated by your the participants and this is a uh, first requirement when you sit down to do mindfulness of breathing. So this is the posture, mindfulness in front, back upright, the rest of the body relaxed, alert. And then you are breathing in and breathing out. So you are very middle now. You are walking the middle noble eightfold path. And you focus your whole attention on walking the noble eightfold path. You embark on the first step of the first territory, meaning breathing in long you know you are breathing in long. So now you gently breathe in long. and gently breathe out long. So we shall do this for five minutes. So you put your whole attention on just breathing in long and breathing out long. So it's important to know that you are breathing in long and breathing out long.
From time to time, you must remember to put mindfulness in front of you. Stay on every breath in and every breath out. You may soon notice that your breath in may be shorter. So breathing in short, you know you are breathing in short. Breathing out short, you know you are breathing out short. We'll do another five minutes of this or until the breath becomes longer. Notice when you do the step two, the short breath, you notice that the bodily formations are more vibrant.
After step one and two, you notice that you are well ready to do step three. And step three is breathing in, experiencing the entire breath body. So this is the part where you will just observe the long or short of the breathing in and the breathing out. Important to notice the air element. Follow the air element as far out as it goes. And when it stops, you stop at the pause and just stay at the pause as long as it likes. So you are experiencing the entire breathing in process. So you are entirely on your body, your upright posture, mindfulness in front, breathing in long or short, observing it from the beginning to its end and the pause that follows. You experience the entire breathing in and out process.
So you must notice the pause. So you breathe in and experience the pause after the end. So you notice the beginning of the in-breath and then the end of the in-breath Notice the beginning of the out-breath and the end of the out-breath and the pause. Do not hurry to the next breathing in or out. Experience the pause too. This is experiencing the entire breath body. Look for all the in beginning, middle and end of all these steps. If you're not familiar, just do the in-breath. For, for the beginners, just do the in-breath. Know its beginning and end. And when it ended, stay there for a while, as long as the pause lasts. Know every in-breath well.
Now then notice the out breath, the beginning of the out breath. The entire out breath, beginning, middle, end, and the pause. Don't be too tense, just savor the entire breathing in and breathing out process. Just enjoy it, you are alive, just breathe in and breathe out. Whatever you experience, brightness or sensations, whatever, we are doing mindfulness of the body, of the breath. So you just stick to the air, in and out. And then it stops. Now we go to the fourth step.
Breathing in, calm the breath, body. So it's breathing in, calm. The breath. Or the bodily formation. Breathing in, calm. Breathing out, calm the breath, the bodily formation. Breathing out, calm. Breathing calm, and you experience the calmness. So the directions are breathing, calm, breathe out, calm. So at the end of the step four, you should experience relative bodily formation, calmness, or just tranquility of the body. Now you ground yourself, feel the bum on the seat, feel the entire body.
and then slowly open your eyes just breathe in and out notice whether you are more relaxed, calmer okay so we did about 45 minutes of uh, tetrate one so you must continue to practice these four steps by yourself just now I just sort of do step one, step two, step three, step four and then you have to like follow but then when you are doing on your own you can give your time, yourself more time to fully investigate the first four steps as well as mindfulness in front of you and it's not only in the sitting posture that you can do it you can always do it in the standing posture too or even in the lying down posture so this is also uh, just mindfulness of breathing in different postures so today's is mainly mindfulness of breathing in the sitting posture right any questions? <laughs> Hmm. So breathing through your nose uh, is more aesthetic. More aesthetic. If you're breathing through your through your mouth, you might look like a goldfish. So breathing in and breathing out go through the normal apertures if you are feeling uh, well. But if your nose is stuffed maybe you can breathe through your mouth but for all other uh, conditions you should do as naturally as possible through your nostrils so you notice your breath coming in and out through your nostrils okay so no goldfish if possible because you are standing, queuing up, or safe distancing, you can just breathe in and out. Notice the breath through the breathing in through the nostrils. You know, you can do your long breath, especially when you are very tensed, or just observing the breath in and out is long or short. Do the third step. You notice that when you do your mindfulness of breathing, your body, your mind naturally also calms down. Okay, that's the first question. What's the second? Right. So in the sutta, the sutta did not require you to close your eyes. But common sense would say that um, closing the eyes is more, makes concentration better. Whereas you open your eyes, you may start looking at this and that. So closing your eyes are preferred. But if you feel that you need to open your eyes slightly, you can do so. But leave your eyes downcast, half closed, but you are aware that it is open. So you can breathe in and out. So this is, uh, so you can open your eyes. It's not disallowed. The sutta did not say no. So you can open your eyes if you prefer it that way. 
Then uh, in falling asleep, in falling asleep, sometimes you are very relaxed when you do the step one. So step one is a step that is useful for those who have insomnia. So when they breathe in and out, they follow the breath, but subsequently they lose contact with the touch surface of the upper lip and then their breath goes off. So in that way, they sort of like lose contact, they lose guard and so they sleep. So step one is a good step for those who cannot sleep. It actually relaxes and then the person may feel very intoxicated with step one. So step one is followed by step two so that you do not go into the somnolence stage makes you very alert when you do step two. You must investigate this for yourself. You can just follow step one and then you notice that it will become step two. But if you volitionally do step two, you notice that you become more vibrant, alert. So if you do these steps, step one and step two, you don't need to take a long time to settle down in a retreat. You can just do step one and step two and there you are. You are sort of secluded in yourself, in the breathing. So it's just some minor hindrances that will settle down. It's no problem. It is good to observe irregular reality. Irregular, that means changing nature of the breath. The breath itself is irregular. Your breath in, especially in the third step, you can notice the irregularity. That the in breath can be long or short. Your out breath can be short or long. So there are a lot of permutations. The breath can be long, long, that means in, out, long, or it can be short, short, in, out, short, short, or can be in, long, out, short, or in, short, out, long. So there are a lot of uh, permutations. It is to observe this changing nature of the breathing. So this is what you call anicca, changing nature of the breathing. Thank you, Dr. Another question. I sense my body expanding and contracting during breathing. Is this the way? As expanding and contracting, so you notice breathing is in that way. So it is uh, correct. You are like a balloon. Huh? Inflate, deflate. Inflate, deflate. You are but just two balloons. The lungs are uh, just two balloons. Blow up and then down. So this is the nature. Inflate and deflate. Very good. You are just a pair of balloons. Your lungs are but a pair of balloons. So Very good observation. Yeah, observation. But instead of observing the body and not the breathing in and out? It is the uh, effects of breathing in and out. And it is good observation. You see the overall picture as well as the in and out of the breath. Just like you are blowing into a balloon, uh, you are just blowing in and then the lungs expand. And then when you are blowing, you know, when out, the lungs sort of collapse a bit, exhale. It is 
okay, this is the phenomena that should be. You can do, uh, if you have lots of time, you can do step one, step two, and then step two, step one, up to you. Because you are entitled, it's your right to practice whatever way you want to, because this is part of investigation. So you want to investigate, you can investigate. But then the sequence, uh, you may take a longer time to finish step four. Then if you take a longer time to finish up to step four, uh, you know, it may sort of like slow down, but it's okay to investigate. So as long as you can do until step four, you should follow the steps one to four according to the Buddha teaching in the Anapanasati Sutta. Someone said he doesn't know, understand what is the difference between step three and four. Oh, right. Step three just require to experience the entire breathing in process and uh, the entire breathing out process so that you can see the arising of the breath, the ending of the breath, the pause. This watching the entire breathing in and breathing out process actually sort of irons up or you call stealing the bodily formations. That means quietening down the bodily formations. So this is quite, it's quite calming in itself. Step three is calming in itself. But for step four, it further calms you down. It further tranquilizes you. So they say tranquilize. So you must see the difference for yourself, the difference between step two, step three, and step four. When you use your power of your words or your command, when you say calm down, he has a powerful force and this force can be experienced in the bodily formation. Just as your mother or your uh, parent or grandparents soothe you, calm you, you get calm. So you would actually notice the power of words, calm down. So you have to learn how to use the power of the words and the perception of calmness or tranquilizing to calm yourself, to calm your bodily formations so that you have to investigate for yourself the very difference between step three and step four, you have to investigate the difference for yourself. So all these steps are for you to investigate how it helps you to tranquilize your body. So this is first part, the first four steps is to tranquilize your bodily formation. Thank you, Dr. Someone said, I can't feel the breath around the nose or lips as I breathe in and out. I'm aware only of my chest movement. Okay. So the, uh, so if you cannot feel it, uh, maybe you haven't worn your surgical mask properly. If you wear your surgical mask properly, you should be able to feel your breath in and your breath out. So, of course, you are, and then when you put on your mask, you notice the touch sensation. 
So you just require the perception of that touch, breathing in and breathing out. We have to like train ourselves. There are many ways of doing Anapanasati, but this way the Buddha taught us, he says the position is Parimukha. Parimukha means around the mouth, the face, so you can train yourself. Train yourself to just notice the breathing in and breathing out through the nostrils. We want to notice this position too because this position is a very good position. Sometimes we don't want to feel things below the nostril. So you have to learn how to breathe in and out at the nostrils. Why it's good to stay at the nostrils is sometimes body and eggs become very obvious below the neck or at the neck. So feeling the breath or the air. So you want to feel, you may have to exert a little bit then you can feel the breath. So it also says about your own disposition properly, you are very gentle. So your breath may be very gentle, maybe not very perceptible. But never mind, you just get, you will get used to it. You will notice the breath. When you put on the mask, you will notice the breath. So you take off the mask, you will also notice the breath because you are now more observant of the touch of the air on your upper lip. And then you sort of lift your head up so that the air can touch the upper surface of your lip more uh, sensitively. You may be more able to sense that. So this is uh, some suggestions for you to consider. What if we have mental thoughts during the breathing process? What do we do? So, this is uh, training. This is training and thoughts uh, will come and go. So, it's, uh, it's okay. Just see them as clouds, you know, will just come and go. But as long as your mind is aware that these are just uh, thoughts and that you don't get involved with them, and that you can refocus your mind onto your breathing in and out, it will be good. So this noticing your thoughts is also uh, mindful. That means you become aware of your thoughts. But now we want to sort of train the puppy to stay at the breath. So you have to sort of tell the puppy breath or you call the monkey mind to just stay at the breath. So after a while, after training and say, come back, come back to the breath, the breath, uh, you will stay on the breath. It just requires training. And then if you enjoy staying on the breath, you will stay at the breath. So you must find your enjoyment part of the breath. The air is light. No, it's the lightest thing that you can feel. So it is of the four elements, lightness. Air is of very light element. Earth is heavy. Water is, you know, fluidity. Heat is the temperature. Of these four elements, uh, the air is a very light element to be enjoyed. They say airy fairy. Airy fairy, yeah. So you want to enjoy the air. You want to appreciate the air coming in and going out. So you must look for the part that you will enjoy, that you will savor. Right. So what happens if we have this internal commentary that tells us So the commentary is just, so you must differentiate uh, 
uh, between the commentary uh, in out in out but you are not doing the in out but just the chattering of in out uh, so you must sing no you must sing your in with your in and your out with your out after a while you find this noisy chatter you just say stop it i want to just enjoy let me have just some silence then you just enjoy without the sound so you just in out in out ah, so then you would not have so much of the chatter So if you want to maintain your mindfulness throughout, you have to be alert eh, to the different things. Like you must be alert to the mindfulness in front of you. You must be alert of your postures. And then you also re notice that you know, the step two is an alerting sort of step. So I'm not too certain when you fall asleep. Is it step one? If you fall asleep at step one, then you should not stay long in step one, but go to step two, so that your mind will be alert and vibrant. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think the elderly can do this practice. I heard that Gong Ming San or some centers do mindfulness of breathing. So uh, when you do mindfulness of breathing, you are able to concentrate. Because you are concentrating on your breath, the faculty of concentration is improved. When the concentration faculty is improved and developed, you keep dementia at bay because dementia is a distraction you cannot remember so here when you do mindfulness you remember to focus so doing mindfulness of breathing for the elderly is very important so the mindfulness of breathing have you have to lead them to do it eh, just for a short time and when they enjoy it eh, then they can uh, continue in the practice. So we do mindfulness practice. I did a mindfulness course for early uh, dementia, mild cognitive impairment. I did a paper on it. I use dot B mindfulness that is used for students. And then when they do it, their mind becomes more alert, brighter they describe. Then they say that I did not notice you know, certain information on paper being pasted on the wall, but all of a sudden, after the practice, they notice, they become more aware. So mindfulness practice is very important. So you must start young, so you can hone in in your practice. So the old is never too late to start. It's not like you can't train an old dog new tricks but you can do mindfulness for elderly and you must do things that they enjoy you must find something that they enjoy then you just slowly guide them to the breathing the older generations are into the body so you can like do the chanting bits the rosaries so when you do the rosary they are focusing on it so there are many ways to focus their minds. Sorry, I think uh, you just don't miss out better. Or, um, whether the breath is regulated or is it natural breathing for the first step? Uh, breathing in long and out long. Breathing in long is uh, intentionally breathing in long. Breathing out long is intentionally breathing out long. So it is intentional. This is in order to relax 
the body and the mind. Now when the pregnant ladies are about to deliver, when epidural wasn't used as commonly, in KK hospital where they used to deliver without epidural long time ago in my time, the nurses would tell the fully pregnant ladies about to deliver, breathe in long, breathe out long. In breathing in long and breathing out long, the body relaxes. It has only one way to go, and the one way to go is to relax, so that the body doesn't, the abdominal muscles don't contract down on the abdomen, so that the uterus can do its work. So there's one occasion that you can hear nurses telling the pregnant ladies in normal vaginal delivery to breathe in long and breathe out long because this is a physiologically muscle relaxing uh, process. So when you are stressed, uh, you're all contracted. But when you breathe in long, as that person says, it's like a balloon inflating. So your whole body sort of relaxes. So there's that one occasion where you can do long breath volitionally. And you should do it volitionally for the step one. It is done as in the Noble Eightfold Path, you require right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. So when you do right effort and you are asked to strive means you are actively participating in the process of meditation. So in striving, uh, you have to intentionally desire to meditate. And when you desire to meditate, you desire to meditate the step one of Buddha's instructions. So you volitionally breathe in long and breathe out long. When you do this, uh, you will notice your parameters, your vital signs, your blood pressure will also drop, your pulse rate will also drop, your parasympathetic system will kick in. You will have more saliva, more tears. This is parasympathetic system and you are actually relaxing your body, stimulating your parasympathetic system autonomic system to relax itself so that it's not in the stressful system. So it is to emphasize you have to do intentionally the long breath and the long breath in and the long breath out. Now just now the other, lady, other person says, can I do step one then step two now the step two should not be start at step one. The short breath in and out should never be start at step one. Because when you do short breath in and out, you will start hyperventilating. So when you start hyperventilating, you would go into a process okay, of giddiness, etc. So the steps must be always step one, then step two, step three, step four. It should be along these steps according to the Buddha's uh, instructions. So you all stay close and true to his instructions. Thank you, Dr. Moon. Someone said uh, legs felt uh, painful midway to the meditation. Oh. What so today the topic uh, is about mindfulness of breathing. So we are not into the mindfulness of feelings. So here we would like you to focus fully on the breath. You can move your leg if you want to so that you can be comfortable on your breath. So this is training uh, yourself to be on the breath. Eventually, we will talk about uh, 
pain by itself. You know? So this is what we want you to do is not to be stressed out. We want you to learn how to quiet, tranquilize your body in the first four steps. If your body aches, you are stressed. So if your body aches, then you just relax it. Move it into a position where you feel comfortable. So after a while, when your mind is more focused on the breath and your body is more conditioned to sitting in that way, then uh, it will be uh, lesser. And then you will see it, the pain will arise depending on the conditions. So it will come and it will go. Okay, vibration of the body is into the second part. That means feelings. So the body actually has vibrations. So when you are breathing in and breathing out, you may feel the vibrations, but we are going to the uh, that in the tetrate too. So vibrations of the body can be said to be uh, piti, P-I-T-I or rapture of the body. So when your mind is fully on breathing in and out, then you can also feel the pleasant bodily sensations of the body. But it depends on you. If you do not feel the vibrations of the body as pleasant, you just note it as just the sensations of the body when you breathe in and out. It's just like a tide, you know, just in and out, just the waves of vibrations of bodily sensations in the body. It is a natural phenomenon. So when you have tightness of the forehead and over the nostril, it means that you are trying too hard. So when you try too hard, you must relax a bit. So when you relax a bit, eh, you can just say, a hey, relax. Eh? And just when you start off, you can, you know, it's just your uh, mind can tell your body to relax. And the mind tells the body to relax through your brain and through your muscles. So when your uh, mind tells your body to like flex the arm, so it flex or it clench. So I say clench, clench. I say relax, relax. So it's similar things. So when you give yourself an internal massage, when you say to different parts of your body, Okay, so just now you just said, relax your forehead. Then you will go to your forehead and relax. Then you must relax your forehead. When you say relax, you must follow up to relax it. Then you go to your eyes, relax your right eye. And you must feel it relax. Relax your left eye, relax. Relax your cheeks, relax. Sometimes you want to relax it further, drop your jaws. So your whole face relax. So you can progressive, they call it progressive muscle relaxation. When you can call yourself direct yourself to relax different parts of your body. So similarly for your face, you can say relax. When you notice that your the um, forehead is punch up and your nostrils is punch up, then you say relax. 
and then your body will relax. So this is a way uh, whereby you can sort of like uh, tell your body, the body will be obedient. So you just relax yourself, maybe do the step one, and then step two, just shorter, and then step three. So you just don't be too tense, just enjoy the whole four steps because meditation is to relax yourself, to tranquilize yourself. So if you take meditation as like must do, must achieve, then there will be suffering. So you get contracted. So when you get contracted, the mind contracts down when you want too much. So you must balance yourself. In the beginning, it is common to have this because you are like a new rider on a bicycle. So you may be tensed. The muscles may be tensed, but after a while, you will learn how to relax and then be balanced and focused. Okay. It is all depending on your own time. So we say that if, let's say, please don't sort of like time yourself or five minutes must be this, five minutes must be that. You must do it with a, a flow. The body has a biological clock. So you start the session. Uh, when you start the session, you can, depends on how much time you have. So your body and your mind will know how to time manage. You should be able to say, I want to do four, the first four steps and I have half an hour. Your body, will, your body will know how to adjust and do the first four steps if you have half an hour. Then you will do accordingly. Then you should not have the time constraint. If you have time constraint, it becomes very sort of like contracted. So at least when you want to do something, you mustn't have something sort of after your meditation, you must do something immediately. That will be at the back of your mind and disturb your meditation. It must be something that here I'm going to do, this is the time I'm allocated to do. Now they said the timing is good if you can do it in the morning, but doing it twice a day would be good. And if you start off, if you're a beginner, you know, like drops of water, the ocean feel. So you can start off five minutes, 10 minutes. Then we know that 30 minutes have a physiological uh, effects on the body. So you can do at least a minimum of 30 minutes. Then there is the body is reconditioned. The mind and the body is reconditioned to a calmer state and a less stressful state. So you're able to detox your body and your mind. So 30 minutes is a good sort of like a goal to reach. And if after 30 minutes, it can be longer, depending on your self. Um, that's all our questions we have for today. We, uh, please prepare your questions uh, for Dr. Hu uh, next week. We will start with questions if you have any uh, that have not been answered. So write it down. And then you must practice, you know, these four steps you have to practice because without practicing, you cannot flow to the second tetrate. So we're going to do the second tetrate the next week. Okay? Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, before we end, there is an announcement. Tomorrow, we will have Sister Silver's day with us at 11 a.m. live Thank you.